This video will cover the topic, multiplying conjugate binomials univariate. To multiply conjugate binomials, square the first term in each binomial and subtract the square of the shared second term. Let's break it down. Here's an example. x plus 3 times x minus 3. A binomial is what we call two added terms or subtracted terms. So this is a binomial, x plus 3, and x minus 3 is also a binomial. And these are called conjugate binomials because they have the same first term and the same second term, but in one case these two terms are added, and in one case they're subtracted. So these are called conjugate binomials, and we're going to see what happens when we multiply them. Normally, if we were multiplying two binomials, we could either use distribution or the FOIL technique. Here's what it would look like using FOILing. When we multiply the first terms, we would have x times x, which gives us x squared. When we multiply our outer terms, we'd have x times minus 3, which is minus 3x. When we multiply our inner terms, we would have 3 times x, which is plus 3x. And when we multiply our last terms, we would have 3 times minus 3, which gives us minus 9. That's the foiling technique. We could also use distribution, and in the end, our final answer would be the same. If you don't remember how to do this, review the topic multiplying binomials with leading coefficients of 1. Now, you may notice that we have a minus 3x here and a plus 3x here. If we subtract something and add the same thing, in the end, we haven't changed anything at all. So these two terms, a minus 3x and plus 3x, that's the same as 0x. They cancel each other out, and what we're really left with is x squared minus 9. Why are there only two terms in the answer? Aren't there usually three or four when you multiply binomials? This happens any time that the two binomials we're multiplying have the same first term and the opposite second terms. In our example, both of these have the same first term x and opposite second terms, plus 3 and minus 3, which again is why they're called conjugate binomials. Here are some other examples of conjugate binomials. We have x minus 2 and x plus 2, same first term of x, opposite second terms of minus 2 and plus 2. Another example is y plus 3x and y minus 3x, same first term of y and opposite second terms of 3x and minus 3x. So what happens when we multiply these? First, let's remember what happened in our first example. We multiplied these conjugate binomials and our middle terms of minus 3x and plus 3x ended up canceling each other, so the only terms that were left in the end was the first term squared, which in this case was x squared, and the last two terms multiplied, which was minus 9. And our final answer was x squared minus 9. And in fact, the same thing will happen anytime we multiply two conjugate binomials. The only terms that will be left in our final answer will be the first two terms multiplied together and the last terms multiplied. So in this case we would have x squared, which comes from our first two terms multiplied, and then we'll have minus 2 times plus 2, which gives us minus 4. The middle terms of minus 2x and plus 2x that we would normally get if we FOIL or use distribution would just cancel each other out, and that's why we're just left with these two terms. In this last example, our first term of our final multiplied answer would be y squared, minus 9x squared. This shortcut technique is useful whenever we're multiplying conjugate binomials. Again, we could still use FOIL or distribution techniques to multiply these, and we would get the same answer. But when we have conjugate binomials, this is just a little shortcut that makes it take a little bit less time. So to multiply conjugate binomials, square the first term in each binomial and subtract the square of the shared second term to get the answer. Yep, 